All right, and last but not least, we have Dimi Resources, who runs Australia's largest advanced uranium project in Great Victoria Desert and Alligator River project in Adam Land, which is the top three uranium districts in the world. So speaking today is the CEO and Managing Director, Mike Young. Mike, please. So thanks very much. It's great to be here. I appreciate everyone staying online uh, till the end here. And uh, well done, you, for organizing this. This is a really a great a great initiative and I'm really happy to be part of it. So yes, we are Australia's largest uh, uranium development company. Um, I like to say the time, the place, the metal. Uh, this was my slogan for BC Iron back in 2006 and what a great outcome that was. Look, global sentiment is changing towards nuclear. We can see that every day in the news. We're even having political dialogue about it in Australia. Um, you're seeing a lot of environmental groups now moving towards nuclear as, as the uh, a, a greenhouse gas, uh, low greenhouse gas emitting electricity source. We have two world-class deposits in both WA and Northern Territory, and we've got a mine building team who has built mines before. We are one of the few uranium companies that can be in production in the first half of, of this decade, and I think that's, uh, that's really important. Um, it is also an ESG investment. Um, uranium is, is, is central to clean energy transition. In fact, the amount of uranium we'll produce will offset about 64 million tons of CO2 which is 70% of Western Australia's total greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we, the way that we're going to mine, the way that we're gonna rehabilitate is very low impact. Uh, importantly, we will use impit tailings management, and that's really important given what's been happening um, recently with those disasters in Brazil. There is a, a lot of emphasis on tailing storage. Uh, and we've had continuous engagement with the First Nations people since 2010, pretty much since we got on the ground up there. Um, and we just um, <clears throat> have no caves no risk of disturbance. Uh, and we do want to, well, we are buying local, hiring local in Kalgoorlie. So look, what's happened the last quarter? Um, the price hasn't risen much. It's up 8% on the back of some buying. We've seen that locally, uh, but uranium equities are up. Vimy's up almost 300%. Why that's happened is the US, which leads the way in nuclear energy in the world has gone from getting woke to waking up. There was pre-election concerns that the US would go crazy left with the Green New Deal, but that hasn't been the case. Biden and Kerry both embrace nuclear power as do Elon Musk and Bill, um, Bill Gates. So that's really what's happened. And then in early December, there was bipartisan support for a bill coming out of the Senate, uh, which really told the world that the US is going to back nuclear power. Nuclear is 20% of America's power and it's 55% of their clean energy. And the US represents 28% of the global market. So they really are key um, to the nuclear industry. And, and we can see what's happening. And also China with the new five-year plan is ramping up nuclear as well. While this is going on, the supply side is shrinking and there is a systemic shortage coming. Uh, uranium supply and demand, go through this real quick. Demand, demand is increasing. Uh, global demand is expected to be up by 52% by 2040. Small modular reactors, micro reactors are starting to um, become very popular and I expect by the end of the decade, we'll see those commercialized. And we are seeing the US inventory uh, draw down at the US reactors. Major suppliers are closing mines. Ranger and Comanac are now closed. Uh, COVID-19 and economic cutbacks reduced supply in 2020 by 60 million pounds. So in 2020, the world burned 180 million pounds of uranium and mined 120. So that is the shortage that we're starting to see. Um, most global uranium production today is not profitable at current spot prices, but all of those uh, mines are protected by long-term contracts. And we are seeing a shortage coming. Um, in terms of supply, this is this is new reactors out to 2040. Uh, we're expecting it to move from 392 gigawatts to 569 gigawatts. It's pretty significant. All of that growth is really in non-OECD countries, China, the Middle East. Um, the second unit in the UAE is now being refueled as we speak. The first unit is online and they'll have four units in the UAE providing 25% of their electricity. Uh, and on the supply side, we are seeing a significant shortfall um, obviously, if the price is high enough, new mines come on, but because uranium takes so long to permit, um, it, any mine that's not a long way down its permitting uh, and its de definitive feasibility schedule by now is just not going to make it by 2025, in my view, and, and we are certainly one of those mines. Um, in the United States, they get all of their uranium from overseas. Uh, that is our main market, and that's how we plan to fund the project. And this graph shows you that the utility coverage uh, there's a lot of uncovered demand in the U.S. market from 2025, 24 onwards, um, which is when we'd expect to be in production. And that's why we have somebody embedded in the U.S. talking to U.S. reactors. It's our key. It's our key market. This is online, this presentation. So if I go through it too quickly, 
Um, we'll come back to it. Look, history of uranium pricing is really interesting. There's a spot market, uh, which is actually an arbitrage floor price. And then there's a long-term contract market. And all of the long-term contracts sit above that thin blue line. Um, and what we expect to see is a return to contracting in the not too distant future. I won't dwell on this. Um, send me an email if you want to talk more about this, because this could take an entire half hour. What I will talk about is the consensus price outlook. So this is a whole bunch of people down the right-hand side who have a view on the uranium price. You can see it's a, a big cloud of views, but the median, as you can see on the spot price, starts to go up. If you recall from this graph, there's an arbitrage between the spot price and the contract price. And what we've done is put that arbitrage back in. And you can see the forecast contracts going out 24, 25 um, plus $60. We're expecting to get about 55 um, uh, life of mine, average price, uh, but obviously some of the consensus view is higher than that. So that's a leverage opportunity for Vimy. Very experienced board. Uh, we've all built mines before. I used to run BC Iron. We took it from first, uh, first drill hole to first orange ship in under four years. Um, because we're time limited, I will talk about the gentleman bottom left-hand side. Scott Hyman, Vice President of Sales and Marketing in the US. Very, very experienced. He's, he's worked in the US nuclear industry for 33 years, both as a fuel buyer and a fuel seller. Um, he knows everyone in that industry. There isn't a person at any reactor that he doesn't have a personal relationship with. Uh, and this is a relationship market, very important. So he'll be managing our contracts and he is in their, their ear every day. And we are having lots of off-market discussions um, and we know from his experience, uh, sorry, from his intel in country, there is a market for all of our uranium in the US um, reactor fleet. Company snapshot, we've always had that share price rise um, that everyone else has had since, uh, since November, which has been fantastic while the price hasn't risen. So I like to call this a uranium boom boom. So firstly, you've had the correction back to where our prices should be, and we haven't seen the uranium price go up. So you can expect the second boom. Uh, this is this just shows a comparative value of Vimy on an enterprise value to net asset value. Um, and this just shows our market cap. And uh, this is on a, a per pounds basis. So you can see that um, our enterprise value to our net asset backing is very low compared to some of our peers. Uh, and it's similar with our EV to resource and reserves. And you can notice some of these some of these names don't even have reserves. So, you know, that's important to consider as well. Um, we have two projects, the Mulga Rock project in Western Australia, a 90 million pounds resource, 42 million pound reserve, and some of that, some of that reserve, uh, some of that resource will go into the reserve in future years with more drilling. The uh, DFS has a 600 million Australian NPV at $55 a pound. And as we say, it's a, a near term production. It's had a DFS done on it. It's had a DFS refresh done on it. Um, and we are expecting to commence early works in the second half of 2021. Moving through the approvals process, by June 30, we expect to have all of our secondary approvals. And by the end of the year, we'll have satisfied all the conditions of all of our um, ministerial approvals. Alligator River Project is a high grade unconformity deposit, similar to the ones in Northern Saskatchewan, the highest grades in the world. Um, that area hosts the Jabaluka deposit, 350 million pounds of uranium, an absolute monster. Um, and we're looking for similar deposits. We already have one small deposit, 26 million pounds of 1.3%. Um, which lends itself very well, very positive scoping study. And we have multiple walk-up targets. Um, the geology at uh, Mulga Rock is very simple. Mulga Rock is a very, very low risk operation. Uh, it's an old river channel. Uh, it's all free digging. We know that because we dug two test pits during our DFS. And we also did a pilot plant for the process plant. Very simple process. Uh, we re simply removed the sand from the ore. Uh, we use acid leach resin and pulp. These are all off the shelf. Uh, proven processes. And so the technical risk of this project is very low. That's an example of, of the test pit, one of the test pits that we dug. Um, as I said, all free digging, all low risk, and that's the pilot plant. Um, DFS, numbers are there. Cash operating costs very low. The all-in sustaining cost, life of mine is $31 and, and $28 for the first five years when we'll be into more high-grade material. Um, and we also have battery minerals. So we're looking at by June 30, we'll have some announcements coming out over the next few months, but by June 30, we expect to have a definitive answer on um, the base metals that the deposit has, and they have the potential to, to provide a four to $5 um, credit, which would reduce these costs significantly. So where do we sit in the global picture? Well, that's all the mines currently operating. In fact, this one here, the big Canadian one should come out because that's, uh, that's Cigar Lake, which is now offline. And you can see that all in sustaining costs for the first five years sits amongst the Kazakh operation. So it's actually a very competitive middle of the uh, cash cost curve 
uh, operation. Uh, Alligator River up, up north in Northern Territory. Importantly, this is not in Kakadu. This is over in Arnhem Land. We have deeds with the Aboriginal people to explore and mine. Um, and just to put our project in, in con a context, you can see a map of our tenements uh, overlaid on the Athabasca Basin, just showing you that it actually is quite a large land holding. Um, lastly, I think I'm running low on time. So uh, lastly, what I'll do is sh show you this graph here. This is a really good one. This shows the expiration of two identical geological basins. Um, one in Canada and one in Australia. And the problem in Australia is we had a three mines policy introduced by a backward looking Labour government. Um, that got revoked by a forward looking Conservative government. But during that time, there was just no exploration. Um, while in Canada, there was heaps of exploration and Cigar Lake, MacArthur River were discovered as well as arrows. So, you know, we're basically back in the 70s in terms of exploration in this area. Um, and that's the real advantage up there. So this is a real greenfields, um, a, a real greenfields province with some significant, um, with significant potential. So this year, uh, keeping the team uranium boom ready, prioritizing and managing um, uh, spending. We are we are uh, taking shares in lieu of salary. And we have part time employees. Uh, we're optimizing capex and opex with early works. We're doing some flow sheet optimization. There'll be some news flow coming out about that. Um, and we're doing target optimization up at Alligator River. In terms of how we fund this thing, uh, KPMG are helping us look for partners on the projects, but really the way to fund it is to get offtake contracts that will then lead to debt and lead to equity. So if you look at a $100 million um, company trying to finance a $400 million project, what you need to remind yourself is that by the time we come to the market for the equity funding, we'll have gone through contracts and debt funding before we get there and it would have been significant rewriting. So. That's it, that's the fast version. Investment opportunity is you're seeing a shift in um, uranium, but long-term we are a very undervalued company. We have a uh, huge leverage to the uranium price. Uh, so I think uh, right now uh, Shaw Partners have us at 26 cents. Um, I think another group out of Canada have us at 24 cents. So you're already looking at uh, two times there, but in fact, if you start plugging in some higher uranium prices, you know we're, we're, the leverage is uh, even higher. So, um, Look, I'll leave it there. Uh, if I've got any questions, happy to answer them. All right, uh, Mike, wonderful presentation. So a um, couple of questions here. Uh, any late stage discussion ongoing and what plans in place uh, should the Mikan uh, lock in an uh, offtake? Yeah, so we've, um, we've got ongoing uh, both uh, responding to requests for proposals, but also doing uh, off market discussions. Um, one thing about the US utilities is they, uh, they know that quickly. They've got inventories that they're depending on. Uh, in springtime, they move into uh, what we call the refueling outages. Uh, the fuel buying teams are also part of the refueling teams. Uh, but we do have we do have um, several uh, off market discussions ongoing and, and responding to RFPs. But that being said, the U.S. utilities just aren't in the market at the moment. Uh, but what's been really important for us is to have Scott Hyman ready to go. Um, with contracts once they start coming into the market. And we know from the discussions we've had that we are um, one of the favored um, non-producing uh, companies. All right, and any intention from uh, key shareholders to partner and fund this uh, to production? Uh, none, none that I can talk about. Sure, um, okay, the next question uh, relates to your uh, capital raising. So. I think um, someone is comparing you to like a boss energy. So would you be keen to look into a capital raise soon due to, to exploit the shortage? Uh, capital raise for uh, working capital or capital raise to buy uranium? I guess it's for working capital. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, at uh, December 30, we're uh, $4 million. Uh, you know, our cash burn isn't extremely high at the moment. Uh, we're good for cash, uh, obviously, as a, uh, an as, uh, well, as a company who's not producing cash flow at some point, we'll have to raise some money. Uh, market's very healthy at the moment. There's lots of interest. So, yeah, I mean, you know, cash uh, cash raise at some point, in the not too distant future, certainly on the cards. Um, that being said, uh, it's not our intention to buy uranium in the market. Um, as I said, our all-in sustaining cost is $28, which is lower than the current uh, spot price, and we're very confident in the technical nature of the deposit, such that we we don't feel that we need to buy some uranium to buffer against contracts for project delays. Um, our project has very low technical risk, and we we don't see um, once we move into project development, we don't see the need to have a buffer of uranium. So it's not something we're going to go spend money on at this point. 
Understood. And I think you went through the Prezzo quite quickly. Where can the investors actually find the, the latest presentation? Yeah, we'll just make sure it's online, but it's it's basically the same as the last presentation we gave and released um, on the website. So if you go to vimiresources.com.au, um, uh, but uh, otherwise um, we'll, uh, we'll probably um, make it available to you, send you a PDF and you can send it to your list as well if you like. But uh, yeah, they can get it off the website. And if they've got any questions, um, just send an email through to info at vimiresources.com.au. All right, thanks so much, Mike. You managed to make it on time. Um, I hope to hear more from Vimy in, in, in coming months. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it and love what you do. Thank you.